thank you because you have heard and answered in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and let's appreciate the King of Kings. Worship him, honor him, adore him, glorify him in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Help me shake the hands of three people. Welcome them to the presence of the Lord. Give him a clap and a shout of praise. Hallelujah. And be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you and we adore you. Welcome everyone here today to this second midweek service of the month of May. The month where God has designed us for distinction and excellence. Summary, existence at the top. Existence at the top by the reason of the light and the glory. So the subject tonight is destined for the top. Destined for the top. Our objective is to understand our destiny at the top. And number two, to understand keys to existing at the top. Our destiny at the top and keys to existing at the top. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and in verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 he said and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. By way of introduction, it's important that we know that the topmost place is God's destined place for his people. The topmost place. God has no other place for his people except the top. Throughout scripture, we see promises that guarantee the existence of God's people at the top. Throughout scriptures, we also see people that existed at the top because of their connection with God. In the course of this teaching, Probably by Sunday, we'll be getting to understand the reason why we, we, we should exist at the top. It's not for fancy, not for fun fair, but we'll get the reasons. But today, we're going to look at how the scriptures made it clear that the destiny of God's people is the top place. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus that everyone of here, everyone here, seated what life. And everyone watching all over the world. That that place that God has for you at the top. No devil shall push you down from there. In the name of Jesus. No devil shall push you down from there. In the name of Jesus. Now we are we're going to look at it from various angles. First of all. We are destined for the top. By creation. Destined for the top. By creation. Genesis chapter 1. And in verse 28, Genesis chapter 1, if you start from verse 26, first of all, God said, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You jump to verse so God created man in his, in his image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. And multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So by creation, our destiny is the destiny for the top. Why do we say so? First, God made man in his image. 
God is not down. God is not low. God is not in the pit. God is the most high. He won't create people in his image to be most low. Uh, if you came, if, if you are in the image and the likeness of the eagle, you are not permitted to fly low. The eagle flies high. The eagle is the king of the birds. Flying 10,000 feet above sea level. God made man in his image and made man after his likeness. The meaning of that is man is designed, was designed to exist in the realm of God, in the, in the, in the, in the dimension of God, which is high and not low. And then God qualified it when he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion. Subdue means take charge. Have dominion means rise to the top. Just rise and be on top. Be in command. Be in control. And so by creation, man was designed and destined for the top. Now you look at Psalm chapter 8 and in verse 1. The scripture said, O Lord our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou might steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? You made him a little lower than Elohim. That's the Hebrew word for that place. And has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him have dominion again over the works of the hands. And you have put all things under his feet. That is, you put him in charge. He is up. Everything is under. That is the destiny of man by creation. I announce today in the name of Jesus. Every force from hell, every force of your father's house, every force of witchcraft, every force anywhere they have come from that is trying to limit your life and to put you down and to put you in the pit, contrary to your creative and creation destiny, I declare that force is broken right now in the name of Jesus. Destined for the top by creation. Number two, we are destined for the top. By the covenant. The Abrahamic covenant. Destined for the top. By the covenant. By the Abrahamic covenant. In Genesis chapter 2. 12. Verse 2 and in verse 3. Now when God called Abraham. Alright let's start from verse 1. And God. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham. Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred. And from thy father's house. Unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. <clears throat> and I will make thy name great. A great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shall be a blessing. I will make thy name great. I will make you influential. I will make you relevant. I will make you, you dominant. I will make you notorious. Notorious for good. I will make you a principal man, a principal man among men. And now God began to speak not just to Abraham, but to Abraham's sake. In Genesis chapter 15 and in verse 5. In Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. And he brought him. Fought abroad and said, look now toward heaven. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. He's talking about the stars, not just in quantity, but in semblance. That is, every child of Abraham, anyone connected to, to the Abrahamic covenant, is a star, is a kingdom star, is a star of God. No wonder at one point he said, that your offspring shall be like the stars of heaven and the sand on the, on the seashore. More like whatever they choose. If they want to be sand, they can be sand, but if they want to be stars, they can be stars. But now, it comes into Genesis chapter 17 and from verse 4 all the way to verse 6. 
he said as for me god speaking to abraham behold my covenant is with you with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations neither shall thy name anymore be called abraham but thy name shall be abraham for a father of many nations have i made thee verse 7 6 now and i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee can you see that first of all every child of abraham every covenant child of abraham is designed to be a star you are meant to be a star meant to be celebrated on earth meant to be celebrated by heaven meant to be celebrated by angels not tolerated by demons not frustrated by witches not frustrated by ancestral curses today i announce everything that is a cause of frustration everything that is a cause of limitation in your life i declare them arrested right now in the name of jesus hallelujah now look at that it's a king's Verse 6 now. I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of you. That is, Abraham, other people give birth to children, boys and girls. Baby boys, baby girls. But because of my covenant with you, Abraham, you are going to give birth not just to babies but to nations and you are going to give birth to kings everyone coming out of your loin is either a nation or a king ay, 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 ay. either a nation or a king no wonder we have the nation of the jews today we have the arabian nations today we have the Midian and all manner of nations that came out of the physical loin of Abraham. Every child of Abraham, don't forget this for as long as you live, is either a nation or a king. Every daughter of Abraham is either a nation or a royalty. Am I speaking to anybody here at all? I announce to you today, every devil that has placed the spell of smallness on your life, that spell is broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to somebody here. Kingship, royalty is your portion. My mother told me a story. She said, when I was young, small child, just growing and starting to talk, she said, I commanded all of them, call me king, call me, and give them a particular title. This is what I shall be called. Wow. Child, just growing up. And all of a sudden, a royalty was crying on the inside and expressed as a speaking young child. Beloved, there is royalty inside you. There is kingship inside you. There is bigness inside you. There is greatness inside you. And no devil can frustrate that. By the Abrahamic covenant, we, we are destined for the top. And you must reject every attempt of the enemy to keep you in the pit. You must reject every attempt of the enemy to keep you at the back. You must reject every attempt of the enemy to keep you where you kept others in your father's house. Lift up your hands and shout the loudest amen. Shout the loudest amen. Shout the loudest amen. Lift your hands and say in the name of Jesus. I am a nation. I am a king. I am royalty as a child of Abraham. And I refuse any other realm. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. And so, we are, we are destined for the top by the covenant. The Abrahamic covenant number three we are destined for the top by the law even the law of moses even the law that people don't see anything good in as far back as the law grace hadn't come yet christ hasn't come yet even those under the law god designed them for the top in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 where we read, God was speaking and it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God 
to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, above all nations, all you Jews, all of you, obeying the law. This law, even though Christ has not died yet, if you dutifully obey this law, the top is your place above the nations. Not the pit. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 to 6, God began to speak to them about being his peculiar treasure. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. A peculiar treasure, and you shall be a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. In Deuteronomy chapter 14 and in verse 2, we see that further where he said, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. If you look at that, if you pause there, a peculiar people, a peculiar nation. I looked up the word peculiar, and it's the word gem, like a precious metal. You are my diamond in the earth. You are my gold. You are my topaz. You are my onyx stone, my carbon core, diamond. Like you know, ordinary stones are plenty, but diamonds are scarce. Ordinary stones are plenty. Gold is precious. The gold, the diamond, they are the kings of the metals. God is saying, I put you in charge. And then he used another word. Precious. That is, my peculiar treasure, above. Not just are you gold, but you are on top. You are above, you are over. That is by the law. Throughout scripture, nothing permits the child of God to be at the back, back, back bench in life, the, the background. Nothing permits them to be in the pit in life. Nothing. You read that further in Deuteronomy chapter 14 and in verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 14. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Above all the nations that are in the air. And then David speaking and making reference back. To the law in Psalm 135 verse 4 all the way to verse 5. Psalm 135. For the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. Hallelujah. Israel for his peculiar treasure. Beloved, it's not what men say you are that you are. It is what God says you are that you are. I heard this song from Archbishop Benson in the house of blessed memory. I'm what God says I am. I'm what God says I am. I am a winner and not a loser. I'm what God says I am. I'm what God says I am. I'm what God says I am. I am the head and not the tail. I'm what God says I am. If God says you are diamond, no devil can turn you into granite. No devil can turn you into sand. No devil can turn you into sand, into, into, into red clay. If God says you are gold, no devil can turn you into gravel in the name that is above every name. If God says you are gold, you are precious stone, you are diamond, no devil can turn you into sharp sand. I prophesy to you today, your destiny at the top, that is where you shall be. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the law, by the law, we are destined for the top. Now, if you look at Deuteronomy 32, and in verse 9 
all the way to verse 13. He said, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in a waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. That is how God found Israel out of, out of Egypt in the desert. And he kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stared up her, young, her nest, fluttered over her young, spreaded abroad her wings, take them, bearer them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him. Do you know the meaning of that? That every covenant child of God, as far back as an Old Testament, is a covenant eagle. A covenant eagle. Eagle. Not vulture. Not chicken. We'll continue reading shortly. A covenant eagle. Not vulture. Not chicken. Killable and wasteable by the roadside. You will see many times that vehicle crushed hen, chicken, dog, dog. But very rare will you hear that a vehicle crushed an eagle. The vehicle can't find the eagle to crush. Ay, 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 ay. So the Lord alone did lead him as an eagle, as an eagle. If this can enter your head alone, you are an eagle, not designed for the ground, but designed for the sky, an eagle. Not easily findable and not easily wasteable. To waste something, you have to find it. The hunters don't hunt and look uh, 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 and they say, I'm, I'm hunting and trying to shoot down eagles. Very rare. As an eagle. Then you go to the next verse. The Lord. He made him right. Not, not crawl. Not walk. Not trek. He made him right. On the high places of the earth. Not the low places. That he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock. And oil. Out of the flinty rock. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout the louder hallelujah. This should make somebody to dance. To celebrate. To sing. To rejoice. Hallelujah. He made him ride. Somebody say I'm riding. I am riding on the high places of the earth. Say it. I am riding on the high places of the earth. Say it. I am riding on the high places of the earth. In the name of Jesus. I am riding the high places of the earth. That is my portion. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. That is destined for the top by the law. Number five, four, is destined for the top by the prophets. You know the scripture is made up of the law. Especially the Old Testament is made up of, of the law and the prophets. The law of Moses all day. And that was why at the mountain of transfiguration, God brought somebody from the law, Moses, and then the prophets, Elijah, to bear witness. The law and the prophets. Now, in the prophets, we are destined to the top, even by the prophetic agenda of God. In Isaiah chapter 2 and in verse 2 and 3, Isaiah chapter 2 and in verse 2 and 3 said, And it shall come to pass in the last days, that the mountain of the lost house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow. The mountain of the lost house, anything that belongs to the Lord, the house of the Lord, institutions that belong to God and his people, they are designed to be exalted above other equivalent mountains. They are meant to be at the topmost top places of life. So important is the, was this scripture that Micah, chapter, Micah prophesied the same thing. Micah chapter 4 verse 1 all the way to verse 2. But in the last days, 
it shall come to pass. That the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it. Somebody say hallelujah. Someone say the topmost top, that is my place in life. Say it again, the topmost top, that is my place in life. Again, the topmost top, that is my place in life. Now you look at Isaiah chapter 60 and in verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold, darkness covered the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. You are such, you are so important, you are so, you are so, you are so relevant, so crucial, that kings shall come to the brightness of thy light. And then in verse 8, he said, who are these that fly? We are men for flight, not men for the floor. Who are these that fly? And then in verse 22, he said, a little one among them shall become a thousand, and a small one among them shall become a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Hallelujah. We are coming to a season where we'll have individuals that will produce the result of a thousand people. A little one shall become a thousand. We are coming to a point where we'll have individuals that will have organizations and institutions that have the capacity of nations. How many of you know that there are nations on earth today that have population of 400,000 people? 500,000. They are full-fledged nations. They have economies. They have everything. Now we have institutions on the earth, church-based institutions that have thousands of employees, thousands of followership, millions. Uh, a little one shall become a thousand. One person like a thousand persons. One person like a nation. We are in that city. And I prophesy, you shall take your place in this prophetic season. In the name of Jesus. Shall take your place. And then you look at Malachi chapter 3 and in verse 17. We are still in the prophetic. The prophets prophesied and they shall be mine. Saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son. Now serve him. And then you shall return and differentiate between the righteous and the wicked. And you will be able to differentiate between him that serves God and him that serves God not. The difference shall be clear. The difference shall be clear. The difference shall be clear. Again, we are seeing the word jewel. They are my diamonds. They are my gold. They are above other, other, other metals. They are above. In Isaiah chapter 58 and in verse 14, I learned that this scripture was scripture that Kenneth Copeland saw that took him into the sky in the flight. He said, God said, Then thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. That sounded to him like flying aircraft across the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Ride on the high places of the earth. Ride on the high places of the earth. Ride on the high places of the earth. Somebody say louder, amen. Somebody who is about to take a ride into the high places of the earth, shout the loudest, amen. Say after me, say in the name of Jesus, my season of struggle in the ground places, in the low places, is over forever. My season of struggle at the low places of the earth is over forever. Hallelujah. Finally, we are destined for the top by redemption. Destined for the top by redemption. In Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 14 and verse 16. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Ye are the light of the world. You are a city, not just a person. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. I have designed you as a city. And you are not, you are not constructed for obscurity. You are not designed for, for mediocrity. You are not designed for the background. You are not designed to be hid. A city set on a hill that cannot be hid. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Somebody say it loud, Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. He said, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, we are with, he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved and has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are not sitting in earthly places. We are not sitting in low places. We are sitting in heavenly places. And then, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, all the way to verse 10. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar, treasurable people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness of your father's house background into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar person that is here tonight. Give him a shout of praise, a clap, and a shout of victory. Hallelujah! A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar person. Give him the praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Be seated and let me say this to you. What is the way? So, we have seen by creation, we have seen by the Abrahamic covenant. We have seen by the law. We have seen by the prophets. We have seen by redemption that our place is at the top. The question is, what is the way up? What is the way up? Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Who are these that fly? In verse 8, light is key to flight. So number one is light of revelation. Light is key to flight. Galatians chapter 2 verse 2 he said, I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. Romans chapter 12 and in verse 1 and 2 he said, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God be transformed by the renewing of your mind be upgraded until mentality is upgraded until mentality is renovated destiny is never upgraded until mentality is renovated destiny is never upgraded it is the renovation of mentality that occasions the elevation of destiny the renovation of mentality occasions the elevation of destiny and you renovate mentality and renovation happens by revelation. Did you get that? Renovation happens by revelation. And the renovation that happens by revelation will produce an elevation and also a revolution. If you give <coughs> revelation to reno for the renovation of mentality, you are going to have elevation and you are going to have revelation. Let it not just sound poetic to you. Settle down with the word you heard today. Any, any, any dust that has settled on your mind, 
any archaic mentality, primordial mentality that the devil has put in your mind to, to make you accept defeat, to make you accept to remain in the pit, to make you to accept the low level of life, and to make you to continue to exist as a struggler, let this revelation blast it off your mind. Clean out your mind by the revelation of the word. And I declare that your destiny shall be in place. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Finally, the light of revelation number two is obedience of faith. If you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 28, 1. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Obedience. Throughout the month, there will be instructions coming. What to do to go up. How to step forward in obedience to go up. We call it obedience of faith because you believe that if you do what God says, you should do. He will do what he says he will do. That is what makes faith tied to obedience. If I do what God says I should do, I know he will do what he says he will do. So you obey in faith. And that shifts the level. If light occasions flight, faith occasions flight. Again, Deuteronomy 28 and in verse 1. If you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, the Lord will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. If you want to go high in life, you must bend low in obedience. You want to go high in life. You must bend low. There are many things that God will be talking to you about. Lifestyle adjustments. Adjustments in behavior. Adjustments in associations and relationships that will facilitate your going up. I see you up because that is where you belong. Don't allow this month to end until this light changes your mind and takes you where you are meant to go. Stand up on your feet with a loud shout of victory. If you believe the top is your place, stand on your feet with a loud shout of victory. Lift your hands and lift your voice and appreciate him. Honor him, adore him, worship him, glorify him. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Elion, El Shaddai, Elohim, Ancient of Days, Lily of the Valley, Rose of Sharon. Thank you and thank you. Lift your hands and worship him. Lift your hands and worship him. Lift your voice and worship him. Honor him. Adore him. Glorify him. Blessed be your name. Adoration to your name. Worship to your name. Thank you and thank you and thank you for your faithfulness. Be glorified and be honored. In Jesus' precious name. We are going to pray some sets of prayer shortly.